Hi there. I'm Dr. David Hasse with the Maxwell Clinic, and we really love brains here at Maxwell Clinic. Um, I'm absolutely convinced that a healthy brain is the most important thing for a healthy life because your brain controls all of the information you're receiving. It controls all of the information you're processing. It controls all of your memories. It controls your mood. It controls your actions, how you move through the world. A healthy brain is the centerpiece of a healthy life. And there are a remarkable group of therapies, neurotherapies to be specific, that are really incredible at helping brains to function more optimally. I have been excited about neurotherapy for over 15 years, and we've been doing various types of neurofeedback over that time. Neurofeedback is kind of a term that you hear thrown around, and it, it sounds familiar, but most of the time, eh, you don't really understand what it is. So I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about what neurofeedback is as a part of a larger neurotherapy approach, and then also, um, exactly kind of what we do here, because there's many different types of neurofeedback, and it's really important to match the right tool to the right job. Uh, you know, there's a problem kind of when your only tool is a hammer, everything becomes a nail. And uh, while neurotherapy and neurofeedback can be really helpful in the broad scope of things, sometimes people have had less than ideal results or actually poor outcomes from having the wrong kind of neurofeedback done with them because they, the equipment wasn't right or the settings weren't right, etc. So let's step back. What does the brain fundamentally do? It learns. And when we have a problem, we always learn our way out of a problem. That's an incredibly great piece of news because we learn our entire life long. And you can actually learn your way into a better mood. You can learn your way into better attention. You can learn your way into even better movement capabilities. All learning involves feedback. And it's very clear that if you're being tutored one-on-one -on -one with a great teacher, they're giving you lots of feedback right, right where the problem occurs. But if you're in a larger class, you're not getting as much feedback. Or if you're in a, a you know, an auditorium of a thousand people, you're getting no feedback. Or maybe online learning, you're watching a video, no, no feedback. So you don't know if you're learning the right things. Feedback is very important for learning the right things. And knowing, am I you know, warmer, 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 colder, 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 right? So if you're playing a guitar, um, you hit the right note and your ears hear it and that sounds good. You go like, ah, that's positive feedback. You hit the wrong note, dong, ugh, that's negative feedback. And they both let you know, hey, go towards what you got positive feedback from and go away from what you got negative feedback from. So neurofeedback is exactly this. We think of it as physical therapy for the brain. And when we look at neurofeedback, we are training brain waves. We're giving you awareness of your actual brain waves that are happening inside your noggin. And that's a really remarkable thing because if we use a set of electrodes, which are just measuring electricity coming off your skull, and we've passed that through a computer, that can watch your brain waves for you, you now can see a representation of your brain waves, or at least know, am I going the direction I want to go? Because neurons that fire together wire together. That's something called Hebb's Law. He's one of my heroes in medicine. Uh, he came up with this uh, idea that the more we do something, the better our brain gets at doing it. And when you step back and start to understand, you know, the brain as actually a complex set of wiring that has um, electricity flowing through it all the time in every direction, you start recognizing that 
electrical efficiency is really what defines great brain function. So if your brain is electrically inefficient, meaning those wires aren't moving where they should, or the, the energy isn't flowing very well, the brain is not going to be able to do whatever you want the brain to do. Whether that happens to be, be paying attention, or having a positive mood, or being able to remember things, or being able to put things together, or, or move effectively. All of those things depend upon you having your brain working well and being electrically efficient. So what happens in neurofeedback in general is that we put these electrodes on your head, they measure the electricity that's coming off, um, we then make a goal. We program the computer to say, this is the, kind, this is the direction we wanna go. It's like hitting the right note on the guitar. And when your brain waves go that direction, then uh, you get feedback. And the feedback we typically use is you watching a movie or listening to some sounds. And when your brain does what we want to reinforce, what we want you to learn, then the movie gets bright and loud. And when your brain waves do something that is not what we want you to do long term, the movie gets dark and quiet. And because the brain wants to watch the movie, it figures out what electrical three-dimensional combination lock to fire to satisfy the computer to let it know that we're doing the right thing and then neurons that fire together wire together. The brain wants to watch the movie, so it figures out how to make the movie play. That's neurofeedback, the ability to get to experience your own brain waves when they are firing in the way that's most helpful for you uh, and being able to discern uh, what's most helpful to what's not helpful. Now, there's a lot of details that go into this. You know, you're learning every day, right? If you pick up that instrument, you start playing, your brain just knows how to learn. Pretty awesome. But it's more challenging when we as clinicians need to do this. We have to first make a great diagnosis. We have to know what needs training in your brain. And everybody's brain is different. You started with new genetics. You had different lifetime exposures. Um, you have, may have had a head injury may have been uh, had brain infections. Um, there's many different things that make your brainwave patterns very unique. And so just like in any other condition, diagnosis, which means to know something through and through, has to happen before you give a treatment. So in any time you're going to engage something with neurofeedback, you want to get a EEG, a quantitative EEG. We sometimes call this a brain map. And this is where we put, again, a bunch of electrodes across the head. It looks like a shower cap. And that measures the electricity that comes off of your brain. Very important to do that diagnostic component so that you get the right program, so you learn the right things to get your brain the direction, take your brain the direction it needs to go. There are many different devices that are necessary to do this task well. I mean, we have, I think at present, 12 EEG amplifiers, multiple different neurofeedback platforms. Um, we've used uh, several different companies of different amplifiers, different software, and, and it takes a variety. There's no one right tool. And so we, we determine maybe which database we're going to use for the person based upon their challenge or which computer system we're going to use. So not only do we use different computers and different amplifiers and different software that is specifically designed to our patient's needs, um, we will use different technologies. There are some types of neurofeedback that are a pure learning experience, as I've described before. There's other types of neurotherapy that actually use small um, microcurrents as a way of doing brainwave entrainment. 
There are other types of neurotherapy, such as transcranial direct current stimulation, which we put a couple of pads in specific areas of the brain and pass a small current through those areas. We will use that often in conjunction with the neurofeedback learning type of therapy. That has remarkable effects. We also use photobiomodulation um, with different tools, depending upon the person, either handheld tools that shine specific forms of light or helmets that show shine particular forms of light in specific frequencies that trigger the brain to make certain brain waves or to be actually nourished from that light. There's so many different nuances. It's so fun for us as clinicians to step back and to sit with the patient, finding out, well, what are your challenges? What is the actual problem with your brainwave efficiency? And what technologies and what programs should we use to help you move forward? It's really a delight when we get to put the brain at the front of the line in healthcare. And it's amazing the other changes that start to fall into place when we do so.